I have a quick commentary on this big, disgusting, bloated, out of control government and this omnibus budget deal. Republicans once again abandoning their core principles, their promises, and really, if you voted for many of them, have completely betrayed you, the American people. Now, GOP lawmakers, they got taken to the woodshed by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Instead of showing spine, backbone, vision, and principles, Republicans folded like cheap lawn chairs. And then as soon as the budget passed, well, they fled Washington. And President Trump was left with no choice to sign this bill because it was either that or get blamed for a government shutdown or desperately not get the money he needs to rebuild our military, which was dilapidated under President Obama. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, while well, they were laughing at these weak and timid Republicans. Now, Republicans should be ashamed of themselves at this point. Can any of them explain what exactly they stand for? Right now, there's a huge distinction between President Trump and the party that is supposed to have his back. Look at the Heritage Foundation report recently. 64% of President Trump's agenda has been completed faster than Ronald Reagan's 49% in a year, which is pretty amazing because President Trump has had little to no help from the GOP. And the GOP has become visionless and feckless. These Republicans talk and talk and talk a good game for years, but they never follow through or rarely follow through. Remember the promises for seven years, they're going to repeal, replace Obamacare as soon as they got a chance? That didn't happen. They blew it because deep down inside, many of them were lying. You had 100 House Republicans and a handful of GOP senators. They'd always do their show votes, and they never had, when it mattered, the backbone to back up words with action. The whole thing is disgraceful, and quite honestly, it gives Democrats pretty much everything they wanted, billions in new spending. Meanwhile, the border wall does not get completely funded. Hundreds of miles of wall should be built and built immediately. That's also good politics. And as the president said today, he'll never sign a bill like this again, because it's the, but because the military was so depleted, well, he was angry at to sign it because this was the only way he felt he can get the money. I personally wish the president vetoed this bill, made them stay in Washington, make them keep their promises. What happened to the Republican Party, that whatever happened to that party that believed in fiscal responsibility? We now need a revitalized second party, Republican Party. They need to go back to their core principles. If they don't, by November, they will have nobody to blame but themselves if they lose. It won't be Donald Trump's fault. Here with reaction, former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, Independent Women's Voice President Tammy Bruce, and from the Hill, Joe Concha. Tammy, let me start with you. Sure. Let's start with Stormy, 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 or this other woman, McDougal. Right. Uh, both are consensual, nonstop coverage. Compare that to rape, exposing oneself, groping, grabbing, fondling, kissing against a woman's will. Is there a comparison? Well, there isn't, but th there is there's actually one. And in both cases, they had an agenda. Here they have an agenda to distract the American people. Everyone has to consider, like with that Anderson Cooper uh, uh, clipping, what are they not covering when they're covering this? That becomes the problem. And of course, during the Bill Clinton years, it was about d making it go away so that they could cover other things that would benefit him. So this is why this network, uh, as a factual matter base, dominates. It's why your show dominates. It's why CNN is losing to things like Naked and Afraid and reruns of Friends, because in fact, uh, facts do matter. People do want information. And they know that when they're hearing gossip, and that's all that it is, they're not hearing information that makes a difference for their lives tomorrow or for the future. It doesn't help them make choices for their family. It reminds them of the meltdown that's occurring. And this is, you know, the good news is with new media, certainly, and with Fox News, they, they've learned what the difference is. You can have opinion programming. You can have a, a programming about the news that's based in, the, in then analysis. And people are able to make up their mind about what they want. But what they're seeing otherwise is information that has nothing to do with the facts of the matter, what really matters. And look, Ms. McDougal, Ms. McDougal looks like a perfectly uh, nice woman. But even then, she looked exploited. She appeared to be exploited. This is a, a, a horrible dynamic when it comes to how we want to be able to run this country I, not, and the rules yeah. of the media and the responsibilities of the media to contribute to our democracy. I'm not, uh, and I watched it because this is my job, Joe Concha. It's also your job. And I think I, I agree with Tammy. She came off as a very nice woman um, and was expressing that she actually had a love it and voted for Donald Trump. But 
There's nothing here, and it goes back over well over a decade. There's nothing here that wasn't consensual. Is, is, is this now the future that we're now going to find out who, who you dated, what you did, give us every detail, we'll spend two hours on it, and, and by golly, that's what we'll call news. Well, the future appears to be present, Sean, but I think Tammy asked a good question, and that was, what isn't being covered? And you brought up that MRC study from March 7th, where 149 minutes was devoted to Stormy Daniels between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. on CNN. 44 minutes went to all other news going on in the country, in the world. So I looked it up, what were AP's biggest stories on March 7th, and it's pretty telling. One was a nor'easter that was slamming the Northeast. One, another was one officer killed, two wounded in Missouri. But here's the most telling one from a political perspective. March 7th was the day after the Texas primary where a blue wave was supposed to engulf Ted Cruz, supposed to be Democratic enthusiasm in that state that may actually turn it red and it actually ended up being the opposite. So we miss those stories because we were too addicted to, we've heard the term state-run TV bandied about recently. This was storm-run TV, Sean. You know, and, and Sean Spicer, we have exposed on this program there's been, I call it the year of the boomerang. What have we learned? Hillary fixed the primary. We learned that, in fact, an investigation was, she had an exoneration before the investigation ever began, and we know she committed felonies. And then, of course, we know she paid for a, of all things, Russian dossier that a foreign national put together for her. And then we learned about FISA abuses, uh, that where they never told FISA judges, as they should, where this dossier came from. It was not only unverified and never corroborated, but it turned out to be false. And yet they got a FISA warrant. This is the biggest abuse of power scandal in history. And they're ignoring all of that and just regurgitating either Trump-Russia collusion or stormy, stormy, stormy. Right. And I mean, I have a theory on this, and, and here it is, which is, I believe, as the president continues to rack up results and accomplishments. 17 months ago, he was elected. He came here as a disruptor, and he's done so in a way that hasn't appeased the media. He's not behaving the way they want. He's not giving them the interviews that they want, the time that they want. He's not going with the narrative they want, and he's making them work. They used to be able to stroll in at 10 and be out by 4. Now they have to stay, you know, get up early and stay late because this president's working tirelessly on behalf of the American people. What that means is it translates, they're going to keep throwing the kitchen sink at them no matter what on a lot of these other networks because they don't know what to do. They can't cover the accomplishments because it's against everything that they believe. They are so fundamentally opposed, not just to conservatives, but to Donald Trump specifically, that they will do everything they can not to cover what he's actually getting done. It's always about chaos. It's always about process. It's about always, and if you hear a bunch of the clips that you played in your monologue, it's, they use the word like it seems as though the following could happen. They don't want to result. They don't want to report on what's actually happening or the result of the legislation or the actions that he's taken. They want to talk about the hypothetical because in their world, all of the good that's coming is is contrary to what they actually believe in. Well said, all of you. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate it. When we come back, the media's Russia collusion hysteria that's still spiraling out of control after a year and a half of no evidence. We'll explain as this special edition of Hannity on your corrupt media continues.